the purpose of this video is to try to show you a little bit about negative exponents. What they're for and what kind of numbers they can represent. And negative exponents can be a little confusing uh, and if you've ever tried reading about them in a textbook or if you've had a, a teacher explain them to you, uh, the explanation might not have made a whole lot of sense. And sometimes the explanation goes a little bit like this. If you have 2 to the negative 4 power, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take this number and you're supposed to turn it into a fraction and put a 1 on the top and move this to the bottom and keep the exponent but get rid of the negative sign. And so you end up with a number like this. And I know 2 to the 4th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so this is going to be 1 over 16. And I don't know about you, but somewhere along there I'm starting to think, what? What was that explanation? What are all these weird, strange rules that you just told me? I'm supposed to turn it into a fraction with a 1 on the top and this on the bottom, but I get rid of the negative sign, and it doesn't make sense. It's like someone's just making up strange rules. Same thing here. They'd say, oh, that's a negative exponent. You put a 1 on the top and you move this to the bottom, and it's 3 to the positive third power. And you're like, what happened to the negative sign? Where did that go? And this would say 1 over 3 to the third power is 27, so this becomes 1 over 27. And again, you're baffled. You're thinking, where are you coming up with these strange rules? What I'd like to do is I'd like to try to show you where these strange rules are coming from uh, and hopefully have it make some sense so you understand what's going on. First of all, negative exponents aren't necessarily to make negative numbers, which the, the name is maybe a little bit confusing there. You think you see negative there and you think it must be for numbers that are less than zero. But negative exponents are really for making small numbers. So th that's the point of that, to make small numbers. So if I bring over this one here, and I try to illustrate 2 to the negative fourth power, we can start with a little table. So here are a bunch of powers of 2. 2 to the fourth power all the way down to 2 to the negative fourth power, and I've already filled in part of this. But I've left this blank because I want to try to point out something to you. When we have 2 to the first power, it's just 1, 2. 2 to the second power is 2 times 2, which of course is 4. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So every time we go up one power, we're doubling the number. So we go up another power, 4 times 2 is 8. Up another power, 8 times 2 is 16. So every time we go up one power, we're multiplying by 2, which makes sense because that's what exponents are for, is for repeated multiplication. So we're always multiplying by another 2 every time we go up the chart. Or in the opposite direction, when we go down the chart, we're always cutting the numbers in half, or we're dividing by 2. So 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and if we get down to this tricky one, 2 to the 0 power, well, it's not so tricky if we just keep that same pattern of dividing by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And let's keep going. So if we go to 2 to the negative power, let's just keep that same pattern of dividing by 2, dividing by 2, dividing by 2. So let's just keep cutting our numbers in half every time. So what's half of 1? Well, that's 1 half. Let's cut it in half again. Half of a half is one quarter. Cut it in half again. Half of a quarter is an eighth, or a quarter divided by two is one eighth. If we cut it in half again, divided by two, what's half of one eighth? That is one sixteenth. So you can definitely see symmetry on either side of this two to the zero power. If we go up 1, we get 2. Here we get 1 over 2. Here's 4, 1 over 4. Here's 8, 1 over 8. 16, 1 over 16. And now if I want to try to write this with exponents, though, here's how we can do it. I know that, let's just start with this one, for example. I know that 16 is 2 to the 4th power, so I know that this is equal to 1 over 
2 to the 4th power. I know that 8 is 2 to the 3rd power, so 1 over 8 must be 1 over 2 to the 3rd power. 1 over 4 is 1 over 2 to the 2nd power. 1 over 2 is 1 over 2 to the 1st power. So now hopefully you can see why when we have these negative exponents what ends up happening is we end up turning into a fraction with 1 on the top and this power of 2 goes into the denominator onto the bottom side of that fraction. So hopefully that makes sense and so now if we want to know what 2 to the 4th power is it's a negative number, I know it's going to be very small and so I know that's going to be 1 over 2 to the 4th power or 1 over 16, 1 16th. Let's try another one. One more quick example, this was one of ours from the very beginning. How about that 3 to the negative 3rd power? Somehow it becomes this 1 over 27. Let's see why. So here I have this set up with powers of 3. 3 to the 4th all the way down to 3 to the negative 4th. And just like we had on the previous example, I can see that 3 to the 1st power is just 3. If I go up a power, I'm multiplying by another 3, so this is times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 3 is 81, or going backwards, 81 divided by 3, divided by 3, divided by 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 divided by 3 is 1 third, 1 third divided by 3 is 1 ninth, 1 ninth divided by 3 is 1 over 27 and 1 over 27 divided by 3 is 1 over 81. So again that symmetry is still there. 3 to the first power is 3. 3 to the negative first power is 1 over 3. Go up 1, there's 9, 1 over 9. 27, 1 over 27. 81, 1 over 81. So I can fill all of these in and this is going to be 1 over 81 is 1 over 3 to the 4th power because I know 81 is 3 to the 4th. So 1 over 81 is 1 over 3 to the 4th. This must be 1 over 3 to the 3rd, 1 over 3 to the 2nd, 1 over 3 to the 1st. So again, these negative exponents make fractions. 1 on the top 3 to the third on the bottom, which makes 1 over 27. So I don't know if that helped. I hope it did. I hope it makes a little more sense. I hope some of those rules that seem kind of arbitrary or even made up um, have more meaning now when you think of these exponents as examples of multiplying up the chart this way when we're adding extra power or dividing by uh, a power of 2, dividing by 2 as we move down a power, and I hope you can see why these negative exponents are for writing small numbers, fractions between 0 and 1.